Hey guys, this channel focuses on longer classes to challenging poses. My name is Christian. I'm going to be taking you through a yoga flow today focusing on shoulders, strength and mobility. Um, if you have a block accessible, grab it. If not, take a stack of textbooks or just something that you feel is sturdy and you can press into and it won't break or smush. When you're ready, let's get started. How's it going yogis? Let's get started laying down on our backs. Find a comfortable position. Really allow the shoulder blades to come towards each other, shoulders down your back, just broadening the collarbones, opening the chest. Let the palms face upwards. Close the eyelids and start to find a connection to your breath. Now let's take one big inhale in, expand the diaphragm, let the chest rise, take your breath all the way to the peak and then hold it there. Then take an open mouth exhale. Again, inhale, take your breath all the way to the top, really expanding through the rib cage, diaphragm moves, chest rises. Open mouth, exhale. One more like that. Big inhale, all the way to the top. Biggest one yet. Open mouth, exhale. Now seal the lips and start to breathe in and out through the nostrils. Beginning to build some inner heat in the belly. Activating your ujjayi breath. Kind of like you're trying to fog a mirror using the back of your throat. Now we're going to start to prime the shoulders. So find some length through the legs. Either point, flex, floint the toes, however you want to engage your legs, whatever works for you. And then extend your arms back behind you. Really find length through the side body. So much so that you feel like your rib cage is going to start to flare upwards towards the ceiling. Now once you find that length through the side body, I want you to push your navel down towards the ground like you're trying to flatten your low back, engaging your abdomen. Now keep that length. Notice how your, the backs of the palms may want to start to lift off the mat. Now this is where we start to find opening through the shoulders, almost like we're trying to lengthen the armpits. Now take a big inhale here. As you exhale, push the backs of your hands into the ground behind you, turning on the shoulders. Five, four, three, two, one, release. Two more like that. Big inhale, take your breath all the way to the top. Engage your abdomen as you exhale, press the backs of your hands into the ground. Five, four, three, two, one, release. One more, big inhale. Exhale, press the backs of the hands down, engage through the arms. Five, four, Three, two, one, release. Maybe you shake out the arms. We're just really trying to warm up the shoulders, get them primed and ready for some strengthening later. Now one knee at a time, bring them into your chest. Hug the outsides of the shins and begin to rock left and right. Just massaging your spinal column into the mat. Then begin to rock forward and back. You just get enough momentum to sit onto your butt. Cross-legged, really trying to align your left ankle with your right kneecap, your right ankle with your left. Just getting a slight opening of the hips. Now, you're going to reach for your block. If you don't have a block, you just use that book or anything that you can find that you can apply pressure to that won't break. Um, reaching for the block, we're going to extend our arms overhead. Now again, same thing we did on our backs. We want to find length through the side body without the rib cage flaring forward. We want to push our rib cage behind us like we're trying to hollow out the belly and puff out the back ribs. Now you're going to slide the block down to the base of the knuckles so the fingertips hang off, just so the base and the tops of the palm can press firmly into the object. Now wrap your triceps towards the front of your face like you're lengthening the backs of the shoulders. Push your rib cage back, take a big inhale. Keeping that length, begin to press your palms into the block like you're trying to squish a soda can. Five, four, three, two, 
One, release the arms down. You'll notice such a small movement, but the shoulders really engage there. We're gonna do two more of those. Lengthen the arms back up. Big inhale. Exhale, engage your core, push your rib cage back, press the palms towards each other. Squish that block. Five, four, three, two, one, release. One more like that. Extend the arms up. Big inhale. Exhale, press the palms towards each other. Five, four, three, two, one, release. Put the block off to the side. Shake out the arms. Now you're gonna extend your arms away from each other like a T. Palms facing down, lengthening out through the fingertips. The more we reach out through the fingertips, the more we can engage our shoulders. Now shoulders down our back, arms extended. We're gonna introduce two movements, pronate and supinate. So what that looks like is as you inhale, we're gonna start to turn our thumbs to point up towards the ceiling and keep rotating the palms until eventually your palms are parallel to the ceiling. Thumbs are pointing behind you. Now as you exhale, we're gonna take the opposite motion. Thumbs start to go back up towards the ceiling, point forward, down, and then point your thumbs back so the palms are rotating upwards. Inhale, thumbs go forward, up, back, like the pinkies are trying to go up towards the ceiling. Exhale, thumbs go up, forward, down, back. One more like that. Keep lengthening the arms away from each other. Inhale, thumbs go forward, up, back, pinky starts to rotate upwards. Then as you exhale, thumbs go up, forward, down, and back. Now keep that engagement there. Keep trying to rotate your palms upwards. Keep pushing your rib cage back. Keep rolling your shoulders down your back and then lengthen out a little more. Five, four, three, two, one. Release the arms, shake it out. Again, shoulders so really starting to warm up here. Now we're gonna extend our arms up towards the ceiling again without the block this time. Now we want our palms to face towards each other, lengthening out through the fingertips. Now as you inhale, lengthen the fingertips even more like there's some resistance bands around your fingers. Now take the full exhale to close your fingertips towards the center of the palm like you're trying to squish something in between them. Take the full inhale, lengthen the fingertips. Exhale, make a closed fist, squish them towards the center of your palms. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, close the fists. Now inhale again, lengthen the fingertips, open the palms as much as you can. Now on the exhale, for the next 10 seconds, we're gonna rapidly open and close the fists. Go, 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, you're almost there. Four, three, two, one. Really shake out the hands. Forearms cooking, palms, shoulders, really turning those arms on. Now we're gonna shift our way forward, plant the palms in front of you, come into all fours, tabletop position. Plant the palms under the shoulders. Now because we are working our shoulders today, we are gonna warm up the wrists a little bit more. So what I want you to do is turn your fingers to point away from each other. So your left fingertips point to the left, right fingertips point to the right. Now really lengthen out through the fingertips and press the knuckle mounds down into the ground. Now you wanna take any excess weight off the palm, so I want you to pull your belly up and round through the upper back, pushing away from the ground, really hollowing out the chest. Keep that rounding in the upper back. And you're just gonna to begin to sway right and left, leaning into each wrist, keeping the doming of the upper back. Really starting to warm up into the front of the wrist and the top of the wrist. We'll go for five, four, three, two, one. Now we're gonna rotate our palms another 90 degrees so the fingertips point back toward your kneecaps. The base of the wrist is pointing forward towards the top of your mat. Again, lengthen and broaden through the finger pads so create space in between the fingers. Now you wanna keep hugging those triceps into your rib cage and try to keep the arms straight as much as possible like you're pushing the front of your elbows forward. There you go, shoulders down your back, round through the upper, upper back again, pull your belly up, really dome it out. Then you're gonna to begin to rock forward and back, just leaning your hips towards your heels 
and then going forward towards the top of the mat. Every time you go back, just about a half centimeter of the wrist lifts up off the ground. We'll go for five, four, three, two, one. Now we're almost done. We're going to keep our fingertips pointing back, but you're going to flip your palms like a pancake. So the backs of your hands are now onto the mat. Palms are up off the ground, facing up towards the ceiling. Now this one's a little more uncomfortable, so gauge it however you need to. You want to keep wrapping those triceps in towards the ribcage. Straighten the arms again as much as you can. Pull your belly up, hollow out the chest. Begin to rock forward and back. Five. Four, three, two, one. Slowly sit back towards your heels, shake out the hands, lift the wrists, gain some blood flow again. For a lot of us, that might have been very uncomfortable. Um, a lot of us lack a lot of mobility and flexibility in the wrist, which makes the basics such as chaturanga, any sort of plank postures, or any sort of weight-bearing postures on the hands a little more difficult for us. Then when you're ready, again, we're going to plant the palms in front. Now, step your left foot towards the back of the mat, and then bring your right foot to meet it. Plank pose. Now, in your plank pose, I want you to pull your belly up, Tuck your tailbone forward like you want your hip bones to touch your chin. And then round to the upper back. And then shift forward as much as you can. Hold there. Three, two, one. Shift it back. Plank pose. Inhale here. Exhale, shift it forward. Three, two, one. Shift it back. One more. Inhale. Exhale, shift it forward. Three, two, one. Bring your knees down to the mat. Now you're gonna extend your arms out in front of you. We're gonna find puppy pose. So what that looks like is the hips stay stacked on top of the knees. We're not going in a child's pose. We're finding puppy pose. So instead of our butt touching our heels, we want our hips to stay high. Tailbone stays reaching up towards the ceiling and then we lengthen our arms forward. You wanna keep wrapping your triceps under you so the armpits are almost parallel to the mat underneath. Keeping your belly pulling up, your chest is gonna descend downwards. You'll start to find that opening through the shoulders. Finding that length through the side body, really finding that stretch through the lats. Now you wanna to try to keep the back of the neck long, so instead of looking forward, you wanna keep your gaze straight down, lengthening the posterior, the back of the neck. And then keep lending your chest and armpits descend downwards. You might even find a little bit of a pulse, just little micro pulses, warming up a little more. Five, four, Three, two, one. Begin to walk your hands back. Curl the toes underneath. Then you're gonna straighten through the legs. Shift your hips up and back. Find your first down dog. Feel free to pedal out the feet. Sway the hips. Alternate straightening one leg and then the other. Maintaining that control to your breath. Now we want to find that same engagement from our puppy pose into our down dog. So in our down dog, our weight goes into the insides of the palms, our thumb, pointer, and middle finger knuckles root down, taking the weight to the inside. And then keeping those triceps wrapping under, we want to push our chest and armpits straight back as we lengthen through the arms. And then keep that tailbone high, press your hamstrings straight back. Big inhale, fill it up. Audible exhale. Now on your next inhale, your right leg is gonna go up and back. Then as you exhale, you're gonna bend your knee, open up your hip. Think about pointing your right kneecap up towards the ceiling. Now usually I would have you keep your chest squared off. For this one, we're gonna let our left armpit just descend a little bit more than the right, and then push away from the top of the mat even more. Think about your left armpit going straight down towards the mat. Just lengthening without keeping the elbow from bending. Inhale, square it off, straighten your right leg. Now as you exhale, shift it forward, bring your right knee into your chest, round through the upper back, pull it up. Then shift it forward even more. Three, two, 
one step your right foot to the top of the mat. Once your right foot steps, lower your back knee down, release the curl of your back foot and lift your chest. Low lunge. Now you're going to reach for your block again. Keeping the engagement in the hips, our right heel pulls back, our left knee pushes forward like we're trying to wrinkle the space in between the legs, squeezing them in. Don't lose that engagement with your block. Your arms are going to extend up towards the ceiling. Same engagement we found when we were sitting on our butts. So we want to push our rib cage back, hollowing out the back ribs, let the fingertips hang off. Take a big inhale, really lengthen out through the fingertips. And then on the exhale, begin to press your palms into the block like you're squishing a soda can. Five. Four, three, two, one. Remove the block, put it off to the left. Plant your palms, curl the left toes underneath, pick your left knee off the mat. Now from here, you're gonna press firmly into your left palm and push away from the mat, lengthening your left arm, turning on the left shoulder, hug your left tricep inwards towards the right side of the mat. Make your left arm a pillar. From here, start to rotate to the outer blade of your left foot. You're gonna find a side plank on the left. If you need to modify here, do so. So you can either stack your right foot on top or you can bring your left knee down, extending your right, or right leg back, extending your right arm up. Whatever variation you'd like to take, take it. From the side plank, lift your left hip as high as you can, rounding out through that left side body. Extend your right fingertips as high as you can. Three, two, one. Plant your right palm back to meet your left palm. Plank pose. As you inhale, shift it forward. And now on the exhale, take three seconds to chaturanga. Three, two, one. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, lift your hips up and back, down dog. Notice the subtleties. Nothing fancy, yet engaging the shoulders a lot more than usual. Inhale, sweep your left leg up and back. Exhale, bend your knee, open up your hip. Again, let your right armpit descend a little bit more than the left and then push your armpit straight back towards your right thigh. Inhale, square off your hip, straighten your left leg. Exhale, shift it forward, left thigh into your rib cage, round to the upper back. Then shift forward a little more. Three, two, one, step your left foot to the top of the mat. Lower your back knee down. Release the curl of the back foot. Low lunge, lift your chest. Same thing from the other side. We're gonna reach for our block. We're gonna squeeze both of our feet towards each other. Left heel pulls back, right knee pushes forward. Try to crease the center of your mat only using your legs. Keep that engagement, push your rib cage back. Let the fingertips hang off the block. Extend the arms up. Big inhale here. Then as you exhale, push the palms into the block on each side. Five, four, three, two, one. Remove the block off to the side. Plant the palms, curl your right toes underneath, pick your right knee off the mat, pause there. Press firmly into the right palm, push away from the ground so that right arm gets long, active, and hug that right tricep in. Now start to rotate to the outer blade of your right foot, coming into that side plank on the right. Either put your knee down or stack your left foot on top of your right. Lift your right hip as high as you can, turning on that right shoulder just a little bit more. Five, four, three, two, one. Left palm comes down to meet the right. Plank pose, inhale, shift it forward. Three seconds to chaturanga, three, Two, one, inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, lift your hips up and back, find that upside down V. Big inhale, fill it up. Audible exhale. Again, inhale. Exhale it out. One more, inhaling. Exhale it out. We're gonna go through a couple rounds of some modified Surya A. Inhale, bend your knees, lift your heels. Exhale, step, hop or float to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift your chest, chest forward, shoulders back. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen, stand all the way up, reach the fingertips high, turn on the arms. Exhale, palms to your heart, squeeze your core. 
Now interlace your fingers at your low back. As you inhale, your knuckle mounds pull down, chest goes up. Open through the chest. As you exhale, keep the opening. Just fold forward and reach your knuckle mounds overhead towards the top of the mat. We're gonna take an extra breath here. Big inhale, just slightly lift the chest. Fold a little deeper, extend the arms a little further on the exhale. Inhale, halfway lift, release the interlacings of the fingers. Plant the fingertips down. Exhale, plant the palms, step your feet back. Chaturanga as you exhale. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, lift your hips up and back, down dog. Inhale, bend your knees, lift your heels. Exhale, step, hop, and float. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen, stand all the way up, reach out through the fingertips. Exhale, palms to your heart, engage your core. Interlace your fingers at your low back, chest high, knuckles down, big inhale. Exhale, fold forward, chest towards your thighs, knuckles towards the top of the mat. Extra breath here, big inhale. Exhale, fold a little deeper, extend the arms a little further. Release the interlacings of the fingers, inhale, halfway lift the chest. Exhale, plant the palms, step your feet back. On the exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, lift your hips up and back, down dog. We got one more just like that. Inhale, bend your knees, lift your heels. Step, hop, or float on the exhale. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen, stand all the way up. Reach out. Exhale, engage your core, palms to your heart. Interlace your fingers, knuckles down, chest high, big inhale. Exhale, fold forward. Reach your knuckle mounds overhead. The extra inhale here. Exhale, extend your arms a little further, keep opening through the chest. Inhale, halfway lift as you release the interlacings of your fingers. Exhale, plant the palms, step it back, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, lift your hips up and back, down dog. Find your breath, big inhale, fill it up. Exhale it out. Two more, inhale. Exhale it out. Last one, inhale. Exhale it out. Inhale, sweep your right leg up and back. Now on the exhale, just shift it forward, thigh into your rib cage, round through the upper back. We're gonna engage our shoulders a little more here because we are working shoulders today. So shift your shoulders past your wrist, pull the thigh up even higher, let the front of the delts turn on. Three, two, one, step your right foot to the top of the mat. Now keep your left knee off the mat this time. Let your chest rest on your right thigh for now so we can find the proper engagement. So I want you to squeeze your right hip in towards the left side of the mat. Keep your left leg long and active. So if I came and pushed your left leg down, I wouldn't be able to. Now the shoulders are down or back. Keeping this engagement here with the right palm or your left, wherever you have your block or object, you're gonna find your crescent lunge, but extend the block up towards the ceiling as well to follow. So the palms stay holding onto each side of the block like we've been doing with our knee down. Now push your rib cage behind you. Extend out to the fingertips even more. Now press the, block, the palms into the block as you exhale. Five, four, three, two. Now on one, don't change anything about the arms. You're just gonna extend your chest over your right thigh and lean forward, finding that 45 degree angle with the torso. Keep pulling your navel up, keep pressing the palm into the block. Five, four, three, Two, now on one, grab the block with your right palm, bring the block behind you towards your low back. With your left palm, bring it to follow. Now the same thing you were doing on the front side. You can either press both of your palms into the block with the fingers hanging off if your shoulders allow for it and extend the arms, or you can hug the block with 
all of the fingertips and extend the arms, squeezing your elbows towards each other. If you don't have a block or you don't want to use the block, you can just use the gravity as if the block was there, finding a phantom block and squeeze your palms into each other, turning the shoulders on. Five, four, three, two. Now on one with the left palm, bring the block back forward. Plant the, left, the block in between and the inside of your right foot. Press your left palm firmly into the top of the block. Now it's gonna feel like you're taking all the weight off of your right leg. You wanna engage that much so in your left arm that you are. So pressing firmly into the base and the top of the palm, you wanna turn on the left arm like we were doing in our side plank. Push away from the block, engage that left arm. Now you're gonna keep your right hip squeezing in, keep your left leg lengthening, open your chest to the right and extend your right arm up. Now you wanna turn that right shoulder on as if the back of your right palm was pressing into an invisible block. Create that engagement there. Find your breath. Option to put the back knee down. Now as you inhale, square your chest back off. Plant the right fingertips down. Remove the block off to the side. Now plant your left palm down. Press firmly into that left palm. Turn on your left arm. Roll to the outer blade of your left foot. Side plank on the left. Stack your right foot on top. Lift your left hip. Five, four, three, two. One right palm meets the left. Inhale, shift your shoulders past your wrists. Exhale, bend the elbows. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, lift your hips up and back. Inhale, sweep your left leg up and back. Exhale, shift the forward thigh into your rib cage, round to the upper back. Then shift forward even more. Three, two, one, step your left foot to the top of the mat. Now keep your left hip squeezing in. Keep your right leg long and active. Keep your chest resting on your left thigh until you find that engagement. And then when you're ready, you're gonna reach for your block and find that crescent lunge on the left side. Extend the arms up, holding the block. Notice if your rib cage wants to flare forward, exaggerating that back bend, do the opposite. Push your rib cage back. You'll notice and feel the length in the front of your right hip flexor or so as. Five, four, option to put the back knee down. Three, two, keep the engagement of the arms on one, lean your chest forward, extend the fingertips forward. Five, four, three, two, on one, with your left palm, bring the block behind you towards your low back, and then the right palm meets the left back there. You can either squeeze the block with both of your palms, or you can remove the block and just squeeze the air in between them. Squeeze your elbows towards the center of your spine. Five, four, three, two. On one, with your right palm, grab the block, put it down to the inside of your left foot. Now press firmly into that right palm, like you're pushing away from the ground. Find that length, find the lift through the chest. Squeeze your right tricep in. Make that arm long and active like a pillar. Keep your left hip squeezing in. Don't let it sway out. Squeeze it in towards the right one. Keep that bending your left knee. Open your chest to the left. Extend your left arm up. Then press the back of your left hand into an invisible wall so the left shoulder engages as well. Five. Four. Three. Two, on one, plant your left fingertips down. Remove the block off to the side. Now plant your right palm down, lengthening the right arm. Now from here, keeping that right arm engaged like you were pressing into the block, you're gonna start to roll to the outer blade of your right foot, finding that side plank on the right. Take whatever variation you need to take here. Lift your right hip as high as you can. Keep extending your left arm as high as you can. Three, two, one, left palm meets the right, plank pose, shift it forward, inhale, exhale, bend the elbows, chaturanga. Inhale, lift your chest, shoulders back, chest forward. 
Exhale, lift your hips up and back. Down dog. Take a big inhale here. Now on the exhale, put your knees down onto the mat. Sit your butt onto your heels. You can take child's pose, you extend the arms forward. You can just sit upright if you need to and shake out the arms. Find your breath. I know this class is a bit of a cooker for the shoulders. The more that we warm up and loosen the shoulders before we sit down and hold a static stretch for a while, the more mobility we're gonna create, the more fascia tissue we're gonna melt, quote unquote. Um, working into that area, teaching the muscles to move into a longer range of motion. And we build strength along the way, so it's a win-win. Big inhale, fill it up. Audible exhale. Inhale, take your breath all the way to the top. Exhale it out. One more. Inhale. Audible exhale. Then when you're ready, whether you're in child's pose or you're sitting back onto your heels, you're going to plant the palms, make your way into a down dog, however you can get there. One inhale. Find that connection to your breath. Seal the lips, exhale out the nostrils. Inhale, bend your knees, lift your heels. Exhale, step, hop, or float. Inhale, halfway lift your chest, chest forward, shoulders back. Exhale, fold. Now separate the feet about the width of a block. You don't want the inner soles touching towards each other. Now once your feet are separated, you're gonna bend your knees, drop your hips towards your heels, and you're gonna lift your chest, chair pose. Now in this chair pose, notice if your rib cage wants to flare forward, exaggeratingly arching into your low back, we want to do the opposite. Pull your navel in towards your low back and then tuck your tailbone down towards your heels with a little bit of a uh, hip thrust forward. You'll feel the low back lengthen. It requires your quads and your core to engage a little more here and then drop the hips a little lower. Now keep your hips, knees right where they are because we are working our shoulders. We're going to take a variation here. We're gonna find eagle arms. So what that looks like is our right arm goes underneath the left. We're gonna bend both elbows up towards your face. Now, you, if this is enough, you can just press the backs of the hands into each other. If you can take the full expression, with those elbows binded, you wanna bring your palms into each other. And then you wanna lift your elbows about the height of your shoulders, pull your elbows away from each other, lengthening the upper back. Then from here, press your forearms into each other, turning on the shoulders a little more. Inhale, shift your weight into your left foot. Keep your arms just as they are. Hover your right, slowly step it to the back of the mat. Once your toes touch, spin the outer blade of your right foot down. Keep your chest and hips facing forward. Adjust your stance if you need to. We're gonna find warrior one with the arms in eagle. So keeping our right hip turning forward, pull your navel in. Keep pushing your elbows away from your chest. Keep pressing the forearms into each other. Keep the arms as they are. As you inhale, just reverse your warrior. Elbows go up as far as you can. Then as you exhale, keeping the arms as they are. Again, fold to the inside of your left knee for humble warrior. So your left shoulder drops to the inside of your left knee. Pull your forearms down towards the ground and then squeeze your left hip in. Keep those forearms pressing into each other. I know the shoulders are cooking. Now as you inhale, release the eagle arms. You're gonna reverse your warrior. Keep the bending your left knee. Just your left arm's gonna go up and back. Now keep your, give your left leg a break and straighten through your left leg. Keep lengthening out through the left side body. Take an inhale here. Now as you exhale, we're gonna find our triangle pose. So you're gonna pull your left hip back in space. You're gonna reach your left arm forward as far as you can while your left hip keeps going back. Then, because we wanna turn on the shoulders again, the back of our left hand is gonna press into the inside of our left calf, like it's a wall. Push it in, 
pressing them into each other. Keep your left hip squeezing in, open your chest to the right, extend your right arm up, press the back of your right hand into that invisible wall. Five, four, three, two, on one. You're gonna put a deep bend into your left knee. Start to come onto high onto the toes of your right foot. Plant your palms to frame your left foot. Now from here, keep your left hip squeezing in and go right back into that side plank. So you're gonna roll to the outer blade of your right foot, press firmly into the right palm, stack your left on top. Lift your right hip as high as you can. Really turn on that right shoulder. Three, two, one. Bring your left palm down to meet your right. Shift it forward, inhale. Take three seconds to chaturanga. Three, two, one. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, lift your hips up and back. Down dog. I know that's a cooker. We got one more side and then the torture's over. Inhale, bend your knees, lift your heels. Step, hop, or float on the exhale. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Now again, separate your feet if they're touching chair pose. Bend your knees, drop your hips down, lift your chest. Tuck your tailbone down towards your heels. Pull your navel in. Now keeping that chair pose, take opposite wraps of the arms. So your left arm is going to go underneath the right. For me, this is my tighter side. I'm going to bend both elbows, either the backs of your hands press into each other, or if you can take the full expression, palms touching palms. Great. Now lift your elbows to the height of your shoulders, and then pull them away from your chest. Think about hollowing out the chest area. Then lastly, press your forearms into each other. Inhale, shift the weight into your right foot. Keep your arms as they are. As you exhale, hover your left and slowly step it to the back of the mat. Then spin the outer blade of your left foot down for warrior one with eagle arms. So your elbows stay binded, keep them high. Keep your chest and left hip spinning forward. Keep the arms as they are, inhale, reverse your warrior. And on the exhale, humble warrior, fold to the inside of your right knee. Keep pulling the forearms down towards the mat. Keep squeezing your right hip in. Release the bind. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Right arm goes up and back. Give your right leg a break. As you exhale, straighten your right leg. Take an inhale here in the reverse. As you exhale, triangle pose, begin to tuck your right hip bone back in space as your right arm goes forward. Keep lengthening, keep lengthening, keep going until the back of your right palm comes to the inside of your right calf. Press your calf and palm and back of your hand into each other so that shoulder turns on. Open your chest to the left, keep squeezing your right hip in, extend your left arm up, press the back of your left hand into that invisible wall. Five, four, Three, two, one. Put a deep bend into your right knee. Come high into the toes of your left foot and plant your palms. Press firmly into the left one specifically. Then find your side plank on the left. Roll to the outer blade of your left foot. Stack your right foot on top. Lift your left hip as high as you can. Turn on that left shoulder. Three, two, one. Right palm meets the left plank pose. Inhale, shift it forward. Three seconds to chaturanga. Three. Two, one, inhale, up dog. Exhale, lift your hips up and back, down dog. One big inhale. Exhale, put your knees down onto the mat. Sit back onto your heels or a block. Lift your chest, shake out the arms. Standing sequences are over, thank God. Now shaking out the arms. Let the blood come back to the shoulders, wrist, fingers, forearms. Now we want to start to find that static stretch. 
sitting a little longer into these postures. So we'll start with what we call Gomukhasana arms. So what we'll do is we'll extend our right arm up towards the ceiling. Find that length, don't let the rib cage flare forward, keep your rib cage pushing back. As long as the right arm can get, you're gonna turn your right palm to point behind you. Then you're gonna bend at the right elbow, bringing your right palm towards the center of your spine. Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna bring our left palm and hug the top of our right elbow. Really bring that right elbow towards the left side of the mat as much as you can. Nestling your head to the inside of that right bicep as much as you can. My shoulders are a bit more open, so it doesn't have to look like mine. You just wanna keep that engagement there, really bringing the head in towards the bicep. Keep pushing your rib cage behind you like you're trying to create that turtle shell here. Now keeping your head into the arm, you wanna to start to lift your chest, lift your head up towards the ceiling without the rib cage going forward, keeping it into the bicep. You'll start to feel that opening into the armpit. This is enough of a stretch for me. I can do it with just one arm without having to take the full expression of the posture. Now, if you wanna go even deeper or if you just wanna take the full expression, it's not necessarily deeper, your left arm goes underneath on the left side and then up, so the fingertips hook underneath. What that looks like is the fingers kind of hook together like you're grabbing them or clasping them into each other. Keeping that elbow pointing up, keeping your chest and head lifting without the rib cage following, opening up through the front of that right armpit. Now, if you practice any sort of martial arts, if you're a swimmer, surfer, um, I mean, anything really requiring the arms, this stretch is probably really uncomfortable. It's really lengthening the lats. It's really lengthening the back of the shoulder cap. The whole shoulder girdle is getting some sort of benefit. Um, it is uncomfortable, but this is the area that we probably need to work on. We're not here for too much longer. As you inhale, lengthen the right arm. Exhale, shake out the right arm. Feel that tingling out through the fingertips. Now staying on the right side, we're gonna bring our right arm across the chest. Now you're gonna hook your left arm above the elbow, not below it, but above it. You wanna hook it there. Now using your left arm, bring your right arm to the left even more. You'll feel that length and pull down the right side of your lat. Now keeping that pull, you wanna to start to roll your right shoulder down your back. Inhale in, exhale release, shake out the right arm. Now off to the left side, inhale, extend your left arm up, turn your left palm to point behind you. As you exhale, bend at the elbow, right palm grabs onto the left elbow, really nestling your head into the inside of your left bicep. Now you can stay here, push your, push your rib cage back, lift your head, open up through the armpit, or you can take the full expression. Right arm goes underneath, fingertips clasp behind you towards the center of your spine. Keeping your rib cage back, keep lifting your head, keep lifting through the elbow. You wanna feel the lat, the back of your right shoulder, your left shoulder cap and the armpit feel like it's lengthening. For those of you that are trying to look, are trying to take your back bends a little deeper, these are the kind of postures that take your back bends deeper. 
Opening up through the thoracic isn't really much of a thing. It's more so the lats, the, the muscles that run down the side body, and the shoulders that prevent us from taking our back bends deeper. So these are the kind of shoulder stretches that, you, that we utilize to take our back bends into deeper expressions. Inhale in. Exhale, straighten the arm and then shake it out. Now staying on the left side, your left arm is going to come across your body, left fingertips point to the right. Lengthen, bring your right arm to hook above your left elbow. Find that clasp there, really bringing the arm towards the chest. Keep your fingertips reaching out. Don't lose that length, just roll your left shoulder back and down. So you want to feel like you're pulling in opposite directions. Your arm entirely is wanting to go to the right, but your shoulder is still wanting to stay on the left. Take an inhale in. Exhale, release the hook, shake out the arm. Now from here, you can either just bring your elbows down onto the mat, interlace your fingers. If you have tight shoulders, this is gonna be enough of a stretch for you. You wanna keep the elbows almost like the flat part above the elbow tips, pressing down into the ground. You wanna keep your triceps wrapping under you'll feel the backs of your shoulders turn on. And then you wanna push your chest back, like you want your chest plate to touch your thigh bones and drop your head, opening up through the armpits. And then think about pressing your triceps down into the mat as well as your chest goes back. If this is enough of a stretch for you, great. If for those of you that wanna take it further, you can put a block down in front of you, wide, Put your elbows onto the block, interlace your fingers. What this will do is in the same stretch, it's just giving more room for your chest to descend downwards. feel like challenging yourself here and you want to take the stretch just a little bit further with your head through the arms and the chest pushing back you can press your palms into each other it'll just turn on the shoulders a little more Take an inhale in, exhale gently, safely, starts to come up. Now you're gonna move the block off to the side. Now what we're gonna do from here, we're gonna lay flat onto our belly. 
Laying flat onto our belly, we're gonna extend our arms out like a T, really lengthening out through the fingertips. Now with the arms extending out, we wanna sweep our left leg towards the right side of the mat, opening up through the hips, really extending and opening the front of that left side. Now from here, press firmly into your right palm. You wanna lift your left fingertips like a tent, Keeping your right palm pressing down and your shoulder pressing down, you're gonna to start to peel your chest open and up towards the ceiling till you find a length through your right pec and the front of your right delt. What that would be is the front of your right shoulder. You can bring your head down or keep it lifted, whatever you prefer. The trick here is to keep the fingertips extending, keep your right arm active. The more it's active, the deeper that stretch is going to get. You want to use your left fingertips to almost push yourself away from the left side of the mat. Inhale. As you exhale, gently start to bring your left leg back to meet the right. Now you're gonna to start to extend your left arm out to the left as you come onto the fingertips of your right. So lengthen the left fingertips out. Now sweep your right leg over to the left side of your mat, opening your right hip. Extend your fingertips, lengthen that left arm as much as you can. Keep the shoulder pressing down with the right fingertips. Push your chest away from the right side of the mat. Option to stay here, you can bring your head down, you can find any sort of shape with your right leg, you can bring your knee down. Really the extension and the stretch is coming into the left side. So modify it however you need to. Take an inhale and exhale gently. Start to bring your right pec down onto the mat. Now bring your left palm towards the left side of your rib cage. Press into your palms. Lift your chest, hit your hips back onto your heels. Once your chest is lifted, shift your weight into either side of your hips. Swivel your legs out in front of you. Scoot your hips to the top of the mat so your butt towards your heels, hamstrings into your calves. Now extend your arms forward, reach out through the fingertips. One vertebrae at a time, we're gonna roll our spine all the way down. Feel the low back, low ribs, middle ribs, upper rib cage, all the way down until our spine is flat. Now we'll finish off with a twist. Extend your left leg forward, bring your right knee into your chest. Bring your left hand to the outside of your right knee. Before you find the twist, find the shape in your right arm. So either straighten the arm or bend it to a 90 degree angle. Press the back of your right shoulder down, keep it there. Bring your right knee over to the left side of the mat.
Inhaling your twist. Exhale, come back to center. Push your navel down, flatten your low back into the mat. Bring your left knee in to meet your right. And then extend your right leg forward as you bring your right palm to the outside of your left knee. Find the shape of your left arm, 90 or straighten. Keeping the back of your left shoulder pressing down, bring your left knee towards the right side of your mat for a twist to the right. Big inhale, exhale, come back to center. Push your navel down, bring your right knee in to meet your left. Bring your chest towards the tops of your knees. Give yourself a big squeeze. One leg at a time, extend them forward. Find some length and then release any engagement in the legs. Shoulders down your back, palms face up. Gently close the eyelids. See if you can slow down the fluttering of the eyelids and take a big inhale in. Hold it there. Exhale it out. Release any control of breath. Shavasana, corpse pose. Now you can choose to stay here longer if you'd like. If not, start to bring awareness back to the body. Wiggle the toes, wiggle the fingers. Bring control and connection back to your breath. Extend your arms back behind you, lengthen your legs forward. Find a good morning stretch. One knee at a time, bring them into your chest. Then roll off to either side of your mat and find a fetal position. And then when you're ready, come to a seated position at the top of your mat. Cross your legs. Bring your palms to your heart. Close your eyes. Thank you for allowing me to guide you through your practice today. Namaste. Hey guys, so we put together a free little fun video for you. Um, it's how to efficiently break down crow pose. 
You know, arm balances and inversions are a subject that a lot of people explore and seem to either struggle with or can't quite understand. So he put this little video together so you can understand how to do this posture safely and efficiently. I wouldn't say there's a right or wrong way, but more so just so you can access and unlock this posture in a more efficient manner. Um, if you want to check out this video, click the link in the description below or in the top of the comment section. And if you liked this class and you want to practice with me again, to the left, there's a box that you want to click and it's my yoga for hips class.